Angelo Bruno, a pivotal figure in the annals of American organized crime, was born on May 21, 1910, in Villalba, Sicily. He emigrated to the United States with his family in his teenage years, settling in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This move marked the beginning of a life that would see him rise to become one of the most influential mobsters in American history. Bruno's upbringing in Philadelphia played a significant role in shaping his future. The city's vibrant, albeit rough, immigrant neighborhoods provided a fertile ground for his early exposure to the ways of the street. Despite the challenges of immigrant life, Bruno was known for his quiet demeanor and intelligence, traits that would later become his trademark in the criminal world. Bruno's initial involvement in organized crime was marked by his association with a Philadelphia mob. His entry into this world was gradual, starting with small-time illegal activities, which were common among many immigrant communities at the time as a means of survival and advancement. His acumen for business and natural leadership skills quickly became apparent, and he began to climb the ladder of the criminal hierarchy. Moreover, his relationship with prominent mob figures such as Salvatore Sabella, the first boss of the Philadelphia crime family, played a crucial role in his rise. Bruno's involvement in lucrative ventures, including gambling and loan shocking, further solidified his position and influence. Angelo Bruno's illegal activities, particularly during his tenure as the boss of the Philadelphia crime family, had a significant impact on the communities in which he operated. His involvement in criminal enterprises, notably gambling, loan shocking, and the control of illicit goods, cast a shadow over the neighborhoods. Despite maintaining a relatively low profile compared to some of his contemporaries, the influence of his illicit operations was felt by many. They contributed to an environment of illegality and fear, although Bruno was known for his preference for non-violent methods, which was somewhat atypical for mob bosses of his era. Regarding legal challenges, Bruno faced several arrests throughout his career, but he was adept at avoiding serious convictions. His encounters with the law mainly resulted in minor charges, and he managed to maintain a veneer of legitimacy. This ability to stay relatively unscathed legally enhanced his reputation within the criminal underworld as a savvy and untouchable leader. Angelo Bruno's downfall within the illegal organization he had led for decades was a culmination of internal strife and changing dynamics in the underworld. By the late 1970s, the landscape of organized crime was shifting, with young members of the Mafia growing restless under Bruno's leadership style, which emphasized traditional values and a less violent approach. This discontent was fueled further by Bruno's reluctance to involve the family in the increasingly lucrative drug trade, a stance that put him at odds with some of his ambitious underlings. The tension reached a boiling point when it was discovered that Bruno had backed a controversial methadone program, which was seen by many as a direct contradiction to his prohibition against drug trafficking within the family. This move, along with his generally conservative approach to business, increasingly alienated key figures within the organization. The ultimate betrayal came from within the inner circle. In March 1980, Bruno was assassinated while sitting in a car outside his home. The killing was a shockingly bold move, executed with the complicity of several members of his own crime family, including his consigliere, Antonio Caponegro, also known as Tony Bananas. The assassination was a clear indication of the deep fissures within the Philadelphia mob and the extent to which Bruno's power had eroded. The aftermath of Bruno's death was chaotic and marked by a violent power struggle within the Philadelphia Mafia. His assassination, which had been carried out without the sanction of the Commission, the governing body of the American Mafia, led to a series of retaliatory killings. The stability that Bruno had maintained for so long quickly unraveled, leading to what was later known as the Philadelphia Mafia War. This period was characterized by turmoil and bloodshed, as various factions vied for control of the organization. For law enforcement, Bruno's assassination marked a significant turning point. 
The subsequent power vacuum and infighting within the Philadelphia mob provided new opportunities to infiltrate and dismantle parts of the organization. The FBI and local police intensified their efforts, leading to several high-profile arrests and convictions in the years following Bruno's death. Angelo Bruno's legacy in the context of organized crime history is a complex and multifaceted one. Known as the Gentle Don for his preference for diplomacy over violence, Bruno's leadership style stood in stark contrast to many of his contemporaries in the American Mafia. Under his guidance, the Philadelphia crime family flourished, becoming a significant force in the underworld. His approach to organized crime, characterized by a focus on traditional rackets like gambling and loan shocking, and a general avoidance of the drug trade, set a precedent in Mafia's operational methods. However, the long-term impacts of his criminal activities and leadership on organized crime were mixed. In retrospect, Angelo Bruno's legacy in organized crime is one of a leader who managed to balance the violent tendencies of the Mafia with a business-like approach, maintaining stability and profitability. However, his reluctance to adapt to the changing dynamics within the underworld ultimately led to his downfall and ushered in a period of turmoil for the Philadelphia Mafia. His life and leadership offer valuable insights into the complexities of organized crime, the challenges of maintaining power within such a volatile environment, and the inevitable consequences of such a criminal lifestyle. Thank you for joining us on this journey through history. If you found this story intriguing, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more deep dives into the captivating stories of historical figures and events. And as always, we'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. What do you think about Angelo Bruno's approach to organized crime? And how do you believe it shaped the Mafia as we know it today? Until next time, keep exploring history with us.